everyone, I'm Sarah from Everyday Starlet. Welcome to my channel. If you've been following along with my channel, and you should be, but if you have been following along, you know that I'm kind of going through my makeup collection and testing all my makeup products for you. I'm doing it vlog style so you guys get to see how the products uh, apply and kind of how they wear throughout the day and stuff like that. So today I'm actually going to be reviewing powders. I'm actually going to review face powders and under eye powders. I am someone who definitely uses makeup powder every day. Like, I just do. So if you want to see which powders for the face and the under eyes are my absolute favorites, then just keep watching. Okay, so today is day one and I'm going to try to I'm gonna try to keep all of my base makeup about the same so that I can get an accurate view. So I'm starting out with my Too Faced Primed and Poreless Pure. And just for consistency sake, I'm gonna use my Too Faced Born This Way foundation. And I think I'm going to go in with my Tarte CC Cream. I might try using a brush this time. I haven't actually used this with a brush, so. My NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. So I'm going to try each powder and I'm going to try each one all over the face and under the eyes to see how they work. So I'm going to start with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder. I have the shade 1 Fair and I've actually kind of hit pan on this which is rare for me to hit pan on anything so it's weird i haven't used this in a while i was like using this all the time for a while i think they just don't put that much product in it to be totally honest with you okay i'm going to take some and put it under my eyes to set so overall minimal creasing under the eyes i would say not getting quite as much as i sometimes do like sometimes powders they just gather in your creases immediately and this one isn't and overall i think it's giving a nice finish we'll see how it holds up throughout the day okay so i'm trying to find the best lighting to show you yeah my under eyes got really clumpy which could be more from using the tart but it definitely didn't help the situation there was a lot of creasing it faded in the corners of the eyes my nose is really shiny which isn't so unusual but i feel like the product is just like i have some breakouts that i didn't have before i don't know if that's from the powder or not but i didn't have them when i put the powder on and then i just i feel like it's shifted it got clumpy like the powder just did not stay in place as much as i normally expect the rest of this makeup to stay in place so that's probably the reason why i stopped using it before probably won't repurchase this okay so we have a new powder for today i actually already did my base makeup i used the same primer foundation and under eye stuff so i figure because i'm actually going to be doing a little bit more filming i wanted to stick with a regular powder that i'm familiar with it's the i always forget the name i've been using this powder probably since high school and i keep forgetting the name it's like the clinique blended face powder and this is in invisible blend it's a loose powder it is very messy okay now for under the eyes so, I mean, if you watched any of my foundation reviews, which you should, then you're familiar with this powder because I was using it basically for all those reviews. And, I mean, I'm so used to it that it's kind of the one that I like. It sits well on my skin. I don't feel like it gets clumpy. I just, I really like it, but I will keep you updated on how it holds up throughout the day. Okay, so, powder update. It's definitely rubbed off, but my allergies have been really bad, so I've been, like, rubbing my nose a lot. It's rubbed off on my nose, but... I mean, and I am shiny, but I always feel like this powder never looks cakey. It never gets, like, it just, it fades evenly. It doesn't fade, like, in patches. You know what I mean? You know, I'm not going to say it's an, a miracle worker, but for me, it's just probably the best I've found. So, I don't know, maybe I'll find one I like better in my trials, but... For right now, this is the one to beat. Okay, so another powder day. I actually already did all my base makeup the way I'm normally doing it for this test. And today I'm gonna try a drugstore powder. It is the Rimmel Stay Matte Long Lasting Pressed Powder. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not as big a fan of pressed powders as I think I've mentioned already, um, of loose powders as loose powders. I'm not as big a fan of pressed powders as I am of loose powders. But yeah, but this one obviously came highly recommended. This is actually in, I believe it's in transparent, which I actually prefer when it comes to powders. Now 
try it under the eyes. Okay, so my first impression is that it gives a very nice matte finish. I like the way it goes on. Nice finishing quality, it goes on easily. Not creasing too much under the eyes. I do think that the Tarte CC corrector, like I said in my review of correctors, like it gives great coverage and it, it clumps less than others, but it does still clump a little bit. So I think I'm gonna find with powders doing it this way that there is gonna be some clumping, but I kinda wanna see which one does it the least. I'll keep you updated. Okay, so the end of the day and this powder, I mean, I think it's decent. I was noticing it on my hands more, but like I've been, my allergies have been awful like just I've been sneezing non-stop and blowing my nose so it has worn off on my nose but that's to be expected under the eyes I mean I was rubbing my eyes a lot more so it's not ideal under the eyes but it's not terrible overall I was pretty impressed with it I would say I mean I would definitely use it again I think it's not like wowing me but it's good so my base makeup is on and today's powder is going to be the Too Faced primed and poreless pressed powder. I have the loose powder too, but today I'm going to start with the pressed powder. I probably won't use the little puffy thing that comes with it. I don't think this is a shade. I think this is just their, their translucent powder. And since I love the Primed and Poreless primer, I thought maybe I might love this. Under the eyes. It glides on nice and smooth, I will say. I like it on the skin. It's nice and mattifying feels lightweight under the eyes though even now i don't know it, it's a little heavy i feel like for under the eyes my eyes are already looking a little dry and wrinkly from it so i don't know but i will keep you posted throughout the day okay so powder update it's a little bright but i'm really liking the way this held up I, I'm not crazy about under the eyes because i do feel like it gets creasy my eyes just looked wrinkled than they normally do but as far as the rest of my face i mean i'm a little bit shiny i didn't touch up at all though and i'm really liking the way it held up so as far as like a face powder i'm pretty happy with it okay so base makeup is on and today's face powder is the Too faced primed and poreless powder but this is the loose powder yesterday was the pressed powder today it's the loose powder and i'm making a huge mess here it goes on very smoothly, I have to say, although it does make a mess, but loose powders make a mess. Try it out under the eyes. Okay, my initial reaction is it goes on smooth. It is messy, but you know, loose powders are all messy. And honestly, I think under the eyes, like, I mean, it does make them look a little bit drier, but I don't think as much as the pressed powder. I think it's just a little bit lighter. So it goes on a little bit smoother under the eyes. We'll see how it holds up throughout the day. Okay, so this powder took a beating today. <laughs> I basically did some major cleaning and my allergies have been awful. Those two things may be related. And I also did some cooking and just made a dessert. May have licked the bowl and got chocolate all over me. So this uh, powder took a serious beating today, but I mean, it's not clumpy. It's obvious, it's kind of disappeared. <laughs> center of my face but i've been blowing my nose like crazy and i don't it, it's clumped a lot less i'm surprised under my eyes than some of the other powders so overall i think i'm happy with it see loose powders are messy but they have my heart okay so base makeup is on and today's experiment is going to be with the mac mineralized skin finish and i have medium which i'm not sure if it's the right color i feel like mac it's tricky to find the right shade but i did some research and thought that this was the way to go somehow i don't think that this is really intended to go under the eyes would be my guess it's like a setting powder but just to keep the testing consistent we'll go for it so it is giving me a very glowy finish and mm, it's clumping a little under the eyes not ideal, but we'll see how it holds up. Okay, so overall, um, I like this powder. It's not like as mattifying as some of my other powders. And I'm not gonna say it's my favorite, but I do like that it gives my skin a nice natural glow. It actually held up under the eyes, not too bad, but it's not the best. I probably wouldn't wear it under my eyes anyway, so. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. 
Okay, so base makeup is on and today's powder is the Desado Translucent Pressed Powder. And I believe this is my last face powder that I have. And I'm thinking, yeah, I think it is. And I'm thinking about extending this and doing under eye powders. I've been doing these powders under the eyes, but I have a couple powders that are kind of supposedly meant for under the eyes. So I think I might continue on with this for a couple more days and do under eye powders. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite under the eyes. I do like it on the skin. It's lightweight. It's mattifying. In the eyes, it's not... It's not terrible, but it's not ideal. So I kind of feel like most of my pressed powders so far have started out looking okay under the eyes, like just okay, and then they get worse throughout the day. So I'll see how this one goes. But. Okay, I'm trying to find some decent lighting here. Well, I guess in this light, my face looks shiny, but to be honest, when I looked in the mirror earlier, I think this is the light. When I looked in the mirror earlier, my skin looked drier, and I don't think this powder held down my makeup as well as some of my other powders, it's really hard to tell in this lighting because in this lighting, my face looks shiny. But in like the bathroom lighting, it looked really dry. So I don't know. And it is cakey around my eyes. I mean, overall, it's not terrible. It's just not, it's not my favorite powder. Today, I think I will start with the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder. I've used this before. I like the formula, like I like how lightweight it is. The only thing is I keep getting told that it's not great for photography because it'll give you flashback. Not flashbacks, but flashback. It doesn't give me any flashbacks. I, I have really liked it from the eyes, but it's not ideal. I mean, I just feel like I would love a powder that just like didn't show any wrinkles. <laughs> Just made it look flawless, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So we'll try this today and I'll let you know how it holds up. Okay, so let's check under my eyes. I have the makeup to get a little creasy. I got my hair done today, so I obviously, I had some water that gets on your face when you get your hair washed and stuff. So it kind of went through the ringer. It, it does look a little clumpy. Here's the thing. With the secret brightening powder, it's expensive. So I feel like I have to use it because I spent the money on it. It's good, but I don't think it's like the here all end all answer to under eye powder, like setting powder. I don't know. I, I'd like to find something better, but I'm, my expectations might be too high because, I don't know, I want something that just makes me look younger and perfect. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I have a few more to try, so we'll see. Okay, so today's under eye powder, I'm gonna mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna try the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. And I'm gonna try this vanilla shade here and then the banana shade. I'm gonna try one on each eye, just see which one I like. And I'm gonna start with the vanilla shade and I'm gonna go very light because I don't know if part of my problem has been going too heavy. And then I'm gonna try the banana shade over here. Don't know if you can see a difference. I guess you kinda can. This side actually brightened a bit more than this side. Formula wise, they're about even, but yeah, this side definitely brightened up more than this side. This is the banana side, this is the vanilla side. So this side actually brightened up a bit more. I'll see how they hold up throughout the day. Okay, so bonehead me, I totally forgot <laughs> to film again last night the update on the Anastasia Beverly Hills under eye powders. But I have to say, they stayed pretty consistent throughout the day. The vanilla shade for some reason did not, I think, stay as nice, but it is always possible that this eye just isn't as good as this one. That's a possibility. The banana shade surprised me. That one held up, I think, better than the vanilla shade, so. So now we're gonna go with the Kat Von D Shade and Light palette. I've actually done a whole side-by-side -side comparison of these two palettes. So if you wanna see how they hold up side-by-side, -side, then you can watch that video. I will link it to this one. So I'm gonna go with Levitation under this eye, which is kind of comparable to the vanilla shade. And then I'm gonna go with Lyric, which is kind of the comparable to the banana shade on this eye. Now, right off the bat, this is more natural looking. This is definitely more brightening but I almost feel like it's too yellow for my skin tone. Just looking at it in the viewfinder. I don't feel like this powder formulation works as well under the eyes. I think it works great for like contouring and defining the contour. I think the Shade and Light palette's a great palette. I just 
and I know a lot of people that set under the eyes with this. I just, I do feel like looking at it close that I'm finding Levitation, the peachier shade, to be a little bit more natural and a little bit less creasy. Hopefully remember to update you <laughs> throughout the day, but that's just my initial reaction. So we'll see how it holds up and see if maybe they settle in or don't or see how it goes. Okay, so up close, I'm seeing a lot of creasing. I wish I had not been such an idiot and had remembered to film last night so you could have seen the Anastasia Beverly Hills because I do feel like that creased a little bit less. This is just like, it's kind of major crease action. I did just watch a video on how not to crease or how to prevent your stuff from creasing. I think it was Nikki Tutorials and it was an older video that I just stumbled across and she said to apply the powder with a damp beauty blender. Not this powder specifically, but just the powder in general. I mean, that might be an option. I've been doing it with a dry brush, so maybe that would solve the problem. But overall, this this is not my favorite for under the eye. I think it's gonna be the last powder day. I feel like I could do a million different variations of these and try layering them and all kinds of stuff, but you gotta stop somewhere. This could go, this video could go on forever and nobody would watch it because it would be way too long. I did wanna make a note though that I didn't film it but the other day I was going out later in the day and I did my makeup and I used the Laura Mercier Secret Brightening Powder and I tried the technique of applying it with a damp beauty blender. I mean, it looked okay to start. I don't know if I think I liked it as much as I do using the brush, but um, it didn't look too bad. But by later in the day, my skin looked so crepey. It was not crappy, but crepey, but crappy, that it was crepey. Um, yeah, it just, it looked terrible. Terrible. So uh, I don't know if it was just that powder or what, but it did not hold up well throughout the day. So I don't know if applying it with the damp beauty blender works as well for me as it does for other people. But my last powder attempt is going to be my NYX color correcting powder. And this is in the shade Banana. I feel like a minion when I say that. Banana. Love minions. I'm like obsessed with them. I think I'm going to try this two different ways because I got two eyes, so why not? I'm gonna try it with a brush on this eye, like I do with my other other powders, and it does feel a little heavy. It looks a little, I just don't like when I put powder on and my eyes look like they're more wrinkled. Who does, right? And then I'm gonna try it with the damp beauty blender on this side. You can tell here it's mu it's brighter, so it definitely brightened it up more. But I feel like when you look up close, let me see if I can show you up close, it looks more wrinkled and crepey than this side. I don't know, we'll see how it holds up, but my initial reaction is kind of, I'm not in love with it, but that's just my initial reaction, so I'll keep you posted. Okay, so under the eyes, let me see if I can get some lighting so you can see. I don't know, I think the powder... If I can actually focus. I think the powder got pretty clumpy on both sides, both the baking side and the side that I just used the brush. Creasy. I mean, it looked drier and crepier on this side when I first did it. it stayed consistently, whereas this one looked a little bit na more natural when I first did it, and it definitely got creasier, so overall not a fan of this powder. And that was my makeup powder collection. I hope you guys learned something. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and if you have a favorite face powder for your face under eye anything especially under the eyes if you have a powder that just doesn't crease cake looks good smooth makes me look so youthful then please leave it in the comment section below I would love to hear about it make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my future videos I've got a lot of makeup reviews coming up because you guys seem to really love them and I want to give you guys what you want so subscribe so you don't miss any of them thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you join me next time Whole30 is basically, I don't like to call it a diet because I feel like diet is a, I don't know, it's a, it's a trigger word for a lot of people and it's kind of like a, I like to think of it as like a detox with food. Yeah, you're not doing like a, like an all liquid diet, but your body is kind of detoxing. You basically eliminate a whole bunch of foods, primarily sugar. Sugar is the big one. So for 30 days, you eliminate sugar, dairy, alcohol, happiness. No, that's not true. You can still eat potato. Potato is happiness.